rise ye ashen tarnished chosen undead and welcome souls fans new and old to the next installment of your dark souls 2 scholar of the first sin platinum guide so in the last video uh we got through the gutter the black gulch uh all of the poison statues and everything and we've got one last uh bit to do on this journey through it anyway we've got more many more to come but on this one uh, the last thing we've got to do is beat the boss of the area. And to do this, we're going to summon Lucatil as well, so that we get our third boss defeated with Lucatil summoned. And Lucatil is therefore not allowed to die. Um, so we're going to follow the same pattern as always, which is summon two NPCs, one of which will be Lucatil, um, so that we can share aggro while we spell spam the hell out of the boss. Um, and yeah, again, if Lucatil does die, you either need to die yourself or quit the game um, and then go to a bonfire, reset and try again. Do not defeat the boss without Lucatil. Cannot stress it enough. We're doing it this run. We're going to finish Lucatil's story. You don't want to do it in New Game Plus because that's more bosses than you need to fight. Okay, so out we come. Popping all the poison statues. Taking off the home bones. You can try this boss just summoning Lucatil. Um, but as I mentioned in the Lost Sinner fight, Lucatil has this horrible tendency to try and block with her face. Um, which does not go well. All it means is she takes a buck ton of damage. That is completely avoidable. Thank you very much. Thankfully, if you're smart with the boss, you should not really get hit. Um, to the point where later we're going to be in a position where we're going to be fighting it multiple, multiple times. Um, and to the point where its difficulty is going to increase uh, so that uh, it can almost one-shot us. No, you're not supposed to dodge the fire. That's your one saving grace. So, we're going to summon Lone Hunter for now. Oh, don't. Wow, this is going so badly. <laughs> And the answer is, just block. That is the genuine answer. Because uh, you take less uh, poison from the statues if you're blocking. Shield up. 
There you go, so see, if it hits a shield, you won't get poisoned. That's what I should have been doing. I'm just gonna let the gang come over here. Take off the axe. Put on my chloranthy ring. And we're gonna walk free. Right, just remember, Luke Teal is the only one that matters. So, big telegraphed attacks from the baddie. And if anything, kind of keep the aggro to be fair. If, he, if the NPCs have the aggro, take advantage and do some spell spams. Just as you can see, Luke Teal already taking all that to the face. So I'm going to do some up close hits. That's one thing you want to dodge. If he puts his arm up, that's the grab. You don't want the grab. Luke Till, you are taking so much damage, girl. Luke Till, can you can you please stop? Him? And he's grabbed Luke Till. Oh, he's grabbed me! Oh, oh dear. Spam button, spam button, spam button. I'm dead. <sighs> well. I... This boss on a one-on-one -on -one is so easy. Because the attacks are telegraphable. When you're trying to keep an eye on the allies, it can make a big difference. Okay, we're gonna not do that journey again. So we're gonna go to the hidden chamber and we're just gonna try and do it with just Luke Till and we're just gonna have to go extra aggressive. Um, keeping Luke Till alive is the hardest part of this. Um, and sadly, it's something that's got to be done. So, some Luke Till. I wonder. Taking so much damage. Have you just walked into the fire, woman? There we go, Luke Till has been vanished, and that means that we can't quit the game. And so I'm just going to. In fact, I'm going to do it on my terms. There we go. Oh, Luke Till. Can I rush to the boss and do a big chunk of damage before Luke Till gets into the room? That might be the solution. Possibly the hardest boss fight, purely because you've got to keep Lucatil alive. And she loves blocking her face. Two hits. Roll the grab. Luke Till, how have you taken so much damage? You haven't done anything yet. Shield up for 
that does a lot of damage. Ironically, the one thing that doesn't hurt Lucatil, apparently. Lucatil seems to take damage even just breathing. <laughs> okay, this one's the one. Oh no! Double drink. Lucatil, don't walk into the fire, woman. And there we go. Despite Luke Phil's best efforts, we survived the fight with her alive. Soul of the Rotten, and there we go. I would love to be able to give you a better tutorial than that. So, okay, let's talk it through the Rotten. So the Rotten, all of its attacks are highly telegraphed. You can see the swings are coming. Um, aim is to be at the side or behind. If you're at the side, just watch out when the hand goes up for that sideways slam that hit me. Um, if you are behind, the only thing that can hit you are the big swing where he rotates and uh, the AOE attack where you can see him blowing with that dark energy. Dodge attack, hit. There is a three hit combo, so if he hits down in front of him, just be aware he might do that three times. Um, but if he doesn't do the second swing, then you're perfectly fine. Go in. Two hits, no more. Um, yeah, really simple, but yeah, just got to play sensibly. Um, da -da 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 -da, this should just be a fire seed, so we don't need it. In fact, I'm not even going to touch. Don't bother jumping across. It's a fire seed. We do not use the pyromancy flame apart from for flash sweat, which doesn't matter if it's plus whatever. So, and then look to the outside, and you're looking for this cave here. Mini little cave to the right. Some spice and a petrified something. And we're going to light our second primal bonfire for trophy number nine. The Gulch Bonfire Trophy. And return to the fire fire. get a well done from MZ and strength we're gonna go up to 18 so that's four levels in strength get it to 18 okay now you need at least 2,000 souls you should have them automatically but if you do need to farm then farm up to 2,000 souls to here and from Hyde's tower we have this maiden who is actually a rather nasty piece of work despite what she might tell you but don't worry we'll deal with her later for now oh, talk to this her and we are going to pay her to move the path and only, and this, shall I provide you with one? move path we go don't fall off the edge so I am walking into the edge here um, because I do not trust Dark Souls 2 
hit boxes, terrain boxes, or any box whatsoever at all. Ignore, ignore Mr. Dark for the moment. We don't have enough money. So for now, just light the bonfire and rest. And we're going to go onward. We're going to pop this guy. And we're going to pop this guy. And then this one is going to take two bots instead of one. Or one because he was hitting and I got him during a critical window. So that there, you can see, is a poison butterfly, although I think they look more like moths. Torchy boy. Bounce off. So you can try and free aim for this guy if you want. But don't worry if you can't hit him. Uh, it's just he's going to climb up and try and ambush you in a bit. Speaking of ambushes... Hello! Let him bounce off. Easiest way to deal with him. And there's more. So you can just about make him out across there. However, sadly he is outside of our aggro range. All we're going to do... ...is we're going to trigger those two enemies to come up. And we're going to fight them out here, where we don't have a bowman constantly shooting at us. Keep your shield up. Even It's not for the bowman, it's actually for this chap. Because he will be in some form of ambush. And this is where that other hollow is going to climb up. There is another enemy around this corner. And we are going to deal with this item. However, we're going to deal with it when uh, we light our next bonfire. Climb down. That item is one of the hardest items in the game to pick up. <laughs> Okay. Don't rest, because that's just going to respawn those enemies, but we do want that bonfire. And I'm afraid this is just going to be a bit of... So we're going to run. Our jump angle is from here, and then once we are past the gap, we're going to mash R1 to do a plunging attack so that we don't roll at the end of the jump. There we go! Now, in my two... So my first run where I test the build, and my second run when I make the notes, both of those, it took three attempts to do this. Um, and don't worry, we'll show you what that journey looks like to do it. So if you come here, two... Well, a few things will happen. First of all, we're going to grab the token of fidelity, which is what we want. This, which is what we need this item for. Uh, we need this for a covenant, um, so that's why we have to do this silly, annoying jump. Um, now, you're either going to roll off and die 
At which point, you go back to the bonfire, you kill the guy from up there, you go up and you do it again. Or you're going to land down here, at which point it's easier for you just to roll off, die, and then try it again from that bonfire. That's what I recommend. Once you've got the item, or if you are a glutton for punishment and you want to keep running around to try again, you're going to come here, you're going to jump into this cave here. Watch out for the butterfly at the end. To the end, grab a soul item. There we go. But eventually, let me lock onto you. And I'll just check which one. Don't need that item. Okay, so back to the game. We're going to come up here, and there he is, the giant basilisk. Drop down one. If you do manage to fall down, then you're just going to have to treat it like any other large enemy. Um, just, you know, try and stay behind it. Prioritize defense. is a weapon which we can sell. And then find the hidden door. Grab your soul item and get in this cage. And then another hidden door. Get your shield up. And you might recognize this as there should be an archer around here somewhere. There he is! Oh, you... you... Stop it. down here. main thing to be careful of is this big hole in the ground. Grab the life gem and the soul item. If not obvious enough, 
the uh, the fool will kill you. Grab the item. And then we go. Now we've got the items. We get up the ladder. You can see now why I was suggesting that uh, if you missed the jump to uh, to just roll off the edge, uh, which oh, chances are you will do anyway. The key thing, as I said, after the jump, is just spam the R1. Although I would assume if you're at this stage of the video, then uh, you've likely already made the jump. That's annoying. Okay. It was worth trying. We're going to use the bonfire before that enemy becomes relevant, so... Down here. Here we are. And starting to look familiar. We are back. This is where we made the jump. As you can see, definitely not worth going all that way. Kick that down. But yeah, definitely not worth going all that way when you could just roll off, die, get your souls back and try again. So, rest of the bonfire. Uh, restore humanity if needed. So if you're not human, restore humanity. We are going to summon Bashful Ray again, uh, who's going to help us deal with a an invasion. So when you come out, he's going to drop down from above every time. Keep coming. Two dregs. One with a torch, one without. Before the bridge, we're going to turn left. There is an assassin. We're going to grab this item here for a soul packet. Free cast if you uh, wish. No, up a bit. Do I care that much? No, I don't. Uh, what rings have I got? Okay, so coming to the bridge, you're going to get two hollows climb, and then you've got this double sickle guy. Apollo's literally going to wait. How annoying. So there's one on each side, and it looks like they are literally going to wait until the sickle guy comes back. Um, you can't stun him, so my best recommendation is range. Um, Go. Nope, still not. Why are they even there? Oh well. Uh, butterfly, butterfly, there's the butterfly. Moth. Grab torch. Grab some moss. Is there any butterfly in this bit? There's a butterfly down there as well, but yep. Okie dokie. That hollow that you just saw running off there, he will keep running until it is Christmas. So don't worry about that one.
in here, pop those guys, grab soul item and summon Bash 4A, my favourite NPC. Soldier, equip iron arrows. There's another one of these scythe guys. So we are going to uh, get some spells in him and then let Ray do the rest. Go, Ray. Seriously, Ray, you need to get into this fight. <laughs> And make sure not to waste fire arrows. And now I'm, as you reach this tree, there it is. Forlorn. Back again. Only this time we has the ray. So let him pick a fight with Ray, and then that makes your backstabs even easier. And then just let Ray pull the aggro. Forlorn is so much easier when you've got Ray. There we go. Much easier. Right, now we've got Ray, so we might as well make use of him. So we're going to come up here. Don't focus on the running hollow. There's an assassin. There's a dog around here somewhere. Come in here, pull the lever. That lever is going to drop the bridge. There's the dog. everyone for us. Uh, right. Da -da 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 -da. Forlorn. Bridge lever. Right and down. Hut hole. Sublime. And, and soul spear. Yep. That all looks like things that we should be doing. Okay. So from here you'll notice that there is a big old knight in there. So great heavy soul arrow. Now he's got his shield up, let's just drop down. Let's get our backstab. Soul Spear, so that is sorcery number 6 of 31. And we're actually going to later, we're going to re-farm that item. That is something that we can do in Dark Souls 2. Open the chest for a sublime bone dust. Back up and back. So that's the guy who's going to keep just running away from you. His job is literally just to draw your attention so that you fall for traps and mobs. How rude, huh? Cross the bridge. Oh, 
I could have sworn that there was an enemy here, but it might have been some of the stuff that Bashful was dealing with. There may be an enemy in this area, so just be aware. This gate, this uh, door, and inside Creighton, an NPC, we're going to get the key for that momentarily. But first, we've got a few more assassins that we're going to deal with. This hill is where we're going to go to fight our invader. Usual rules apply. So I'm going to take off the bow, put back Chloranthi ring. Oh no. While talking. So backstabs and stun lock are our strategy. So shield up. Unlock. And then when you run out of stamina, walk back, and then no shield means you are pretty much safe. Definitely one of the easier ones. Priestess Skirt is actually an optional drop. Human Effigy, as you've noticed by now, all NPCs give you one of those without you picking up. What we're picking up though is the Undead Lockaway Key. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to unlock the lock away. So remember all the way back when we met Pate um, and he said about how he met an unsavory fellow and uh, and I was explaining that realistically what you find out is Pate, smooth talking as he is, he is a backstabber by nature and what he does is very much like Patches, he lures people in to bait out traps and enemies and then tries to steal the equipment from those dead people. Well, Creighton has a bit of a beef with Pate because that's exactly what Pate did to Creighton. So argument would be, well then Creighton's absolutely in his in his complete right uh, to be mad at Pate um, because Pate deceived him. However, you then later find out that Creighton's not much better than Pate, to be honest. Um, and Creighton is also kind of a, a lone sword in it for himself and he'll also backstab uh, if need be. Now, similar to what I was saying earlier about the giants and, well, if the king didn't fight the giants, would the giants have fought the king? Well, same could be said about this, really. So Creighton technically doesn't do anything wrong, but we later find out that he is a scoundrel and a betrayer through law. But in your playthrough, he will never do anything wrong, whereas Pate outright does betray Creighton. So later on, there is a fight between the two of them, and you can choose which one you kill and which one you save. Um, and that's the debate of, well, who do you trust? Who do you believe? Now, if you're going to do it, my answer is, kill them both. <laughs> They're both evil. They both drop stuff. However, fortunately, in our playthrough, we don't need to do that for the Platinum, so we're just going to leave them be um, and leave that undecided. But that's just some extra lore for you about Pate and Creighton. So, light the bonfire. And we're going to talk and we're going to get our 10th gesture. It's been a while since we've had a gesture. Who are you? I thought you'd have bastard for a moment. You've set me free. Now I can find him. The cheeky prick. <laughs> he won't know what hit him. He won't know what hit him. Talk again. Crichton of Mira. I travel from land to land to hunt. I've heard this land was full of I joined forces with him. He took the first chance he had. I decided to set a trap for him here. I can't believe that I was Yeah, so not the sharpest tool in the box when he fell for his own trap, but you know. You be careful of him. Paint. I think he said. He wears this rather unusual ring. I've seen his type before. He kills entirely for the pleasure of it. You see? Creighton's got my vote. If I had to pick one, I would keep Creighton alive. He's also from Mirror, and Lucatil is from Mirror, and you know, Lucatil's awesome. Apart from the fact that she blocks with her face. Right. 
And now we can learn gesture for fist pump, which is our 10th gesture. Halfway there, 10 out of 20. And there you go, he's repeating himself. So now we're going to travel back to Medjula. We're going to pop any non-boss souls. two to get to twenty. We are going to burn our sublime bone dust to get our Estus up to plus three. And then we're going to travel back to Huntsman's Cope's undead lockaway. doing on time on this video okay so we'll do the next video will be the skeleton lords boss um, which is it's kind of an interesting one it's a mob boss so it looks like ah, oh, there's three big skeleton lords beat them and then you win and then you find out actually that when you defeat the little skeletons in there that also takes from the total boss health so you have to defeat a whole horde of big and small skeletons um, which, of course, we will be utilising an NPC to help us, and that NPC will be Creighton. Um, so, that's what we'll be doing in the next video, um, as always. And you'll see that Creighton has gone now that we've let him out. So, yeah, as always, I hope that you're following the guide and you're finding it enjoyable and useful. Uh, can't wait to see you all in the next video when we fight the Skeleton Lords. Uh, and until then... Bye for now.